And here we are spawning in the bottom right. In the blue. Representing Ents, Team Ents. Give it up for Sarah. And in the upper left for Berlin International Gaming. He is a wall. Give it up for Showtime. Showtime up here. Of course, going for the oh, going for the 12 scout with his probe. So he's going to look to see if he can uh, deny the natural. He will be able to do so. But Cyril, he's doing what all modern Zerg players do. They say, hey, wow, well, Protoss players really like doing this to us. It's annoying. It's frustrating. It denies me a base that I would like to take. I'm just going to go at about 100 minerals, about 100, 110 minerals in, um, to the natural. And it's instead of at 160, 170, even up to 200 on some maps. And I'm going to go and I'm going to check to see if the probe is coming. And if the probe is coming, I'm just going to go to my third base. And I'm going to take my natural, my, my natural there. And yes, I would rather have my natural in my natural position. It makes life a little bit easier dealing with the depths, but... No, I'm just going to keep, I'm, instead, I'm just going to keep my probes in my main base. I'm not going to cycle them until I have queens out, and then I'm going to be able to defend just fine. That's kind of the, that is the modern approach. You do see some players kind of try to bait out the probe, bait out the block, and uh, force that up. But when that, if that doesn't work, man, it is, just, it is just disastrous for the Zerg player. So that's not, so we don't see Cyril doing that here. He says, look, I am arguably the greatest player of the last three years. Certainly the greatest European of the last three years. And I know what I'm doing. You may be a probably Europe's great, best Protoss by a significant margin. But I don't I, I don't think I need to take that type of shortcut against you. I think I'm going to be absolutely fine. I just know how to read the game. That is really Cyril's true brilliance here. When we, when we look at how he plays the game, it's not about his APM, although he is a fast player. It's not about his micro, although he has an incredible micro. It's about his game sense and the fact that he is so good at scouting. I mean, he's got a circling or an overseer or something just about every 30 seconds. He knows where the opponent's army is, when it is, why it is, and even how it is. This, uh, this probe is just kind of scout in, scout out. We'll see that there's a third base on the way. In the European style, of course, Cyril, he's not going for that 19 third hatchery, maybe... And uh, this is one of those situations where you do occasionally see that, where you might see players that would normally go get their hatch at 28 to 32 supply, would get it at 19. Because, yes, you maybe not get queens as much, but you get that creep spread a little bit more. So, that is kind of the trade-off. And uh, in, in this situation, where you don't have that creep spread uh, to the natural normally, or th that creep spread between the, the main and the third, maybe that's worthwhile to you. Although, Cyril just going kind of for that stock standard build that he has go that he does just about every game and showtime for his part this is a glaive opener coming in from him now this build was incredibly powerful uh nine months ago it was just killing every zerg when zest debuted it in uh in certainly killed me on ladder a good number of times before i learned how to deal with it but at this point every zerg knows the every zerg knows the drg defense it's like the zerglings caught a adept there no nope? okay the depth got out but Anyway, the Zerglings, of course, Mar we, we see Cyril. Again, every 30 seconds, he says, what's in your wall? What is, uh, what's your warping in here, buddy? What are, you, what are you up to? And he will see the fact that there are, well, he, he saw that there are two adepts and a stalker, and uh, if he checks in again, which he will, and right now, he will see there are four adepts. He says, okay, you're going adepts. That is what you are going for, but this is the Jaun, or Jun, I, I believe it's always pronounced as actually supposed to pronounce things. This is the June build. We do have a Robo Bay coming in behind this. And this is, uh, well, there we go. See, it, it is it is hidden, of course, because uh, Showtime doesn't want his opponent to know about it. But we're going to see Disruptors coming in out of this and the Roach Ravager fall of defense that Cyril's going to be using that almost every player uses. I think just about every player uses, honestly, to defend this. Well, Disruptors are really good against Ravagers. So, we're gonna see that here, and actually, this is the this is the even more modern. Uh, when we talk about modern Zergs, we talk about oh yeah, Sarah is playing like most people do. This is the really cool one. So, for a while, it was Roaches. Uh, it, it was Queenling with a spine into well, Queenling with a spine 
into roaches, and you just get a lot of roaches in each that way. This time, though, what we're, what we're seeing is instead, it is Zerglings with four Ravagers. So let me see a couple more roaches on here just to bolster things, but uh, Zerglings with three to four Ravagers. And what you do there is you just surround the, uh, you surround the Adepts, and then you bile them down, and they die. And I forget who first did that, but it's still pretty cool. Is now that the Zerglings will find three of these Adepts off on their lonesome. Uh, two of them should go down. Actually, all three of them will die here. Um, and now the Adepts going out. Over, uh, or sorry, the War Prism is about to get a get out on one, get out on the map once again. Now, Overlord, or wow, Ed, uh, War Prism speed is just about ready here, and uh, we do not have a disruptor out, but the first one is just about done. And now it's going to be showtime, just looking for some damage. As the as the Zerglings of Mar of Serral, they shark around. They look to see if they can maybe try to get on here into the natural, but at the very least, they get good scouting. They see what Showtime is up to. Now, they have not checked the third yet. They're not aware of the third, but they do see the pylon here, so that tells them what they need to know. And they will now find this third base, get a full surround on it. And Serral says, oh, yes, tasty sentries. No, no, not tasty sentries. Let's see, we'll find the adepts. The damn, the, uh, the dangerous thing behind them sitting in there is now there are two disruptors on the map looking for a drop here in the natural. So we see, uh... Showtime has already pinged that out, and he's gonna try to get a queen. Though, I mean, he'd really like to get a lot of a lot of workers, but ideally, Cyril's gonna be on top of the pole. Ideally, Cyril is on top of the pole there, but he does not look to be in the moment. And 14 workers will go down, and suddenly that is that is more <laughs> that is more damage than Showtime has to have expected. I mean, it's disruptors. It's Cyril. You, you don't expect to get that much, but even the best players in the world can be distracted. Uh, Cyril, of course, was microing his zerglings on the other side of the map. Trying to see maybe if he can get on top of this third base, deal with the Adepts. He was not able to do so. And then he lost 14 drones to two Disruptors. And these Disruptors, of course, they took no damage whatsoever. So sometimes you see that happen, and then the, the Disruptors are on, like, 50% hull HP, and it's harder for them to do it again. This War Prism is taking no hull damage. Actually, the Zerglings are going to be able to get on top of these Disruptors. And there we go. That's the damage we're talking about. Nice Blitz there from Sarah. Make sure he doesn't lose anything more than necessary. And he forces the pickup of the Disruptors to make sure he does not lose any. So now we have, uh, from Showtime, as any Zerg will tell you, if there are Disruptor drops, the follow-up is a uh, is a blink colossus timing move out across the map with two to three colossus with um with disrupt with two disruptors and you just try to enforce your will on the opponent so there we go second colossus is done we have two disruptors in the warp prism blink is about halfway done but by the time showtime really starts this push in earnest it will be done there's now Cyril here he's not been allowed to get to that drone count that he would normally like he's lost 14 so he can't get up to that 70, 80, 76 for count if he would like it. Honestly, at 72 here, that may even be too much as he's gone and uh, droned up hard to replace his, his missing workers, but that means his army is not nearly as big as it would be as now we thirst disruptor shots. They're going to look out, look for some sort of damage. They will just get some creep tumors, but again, any sort of thing, any sort of damage you can get. Now, it looks like the Banleys were able to bust through into the natural here. Banley will not connect on anything. Zerglings, well, there are, uh, there's zealots here. They have plus one. That's not really going to get a whole lot. And in implicit damage, look at the creep spread of of uh, Cyril here. Sure, he uh, he has the creep. The, the creep is still kind of there, but it provides no vision. He doesn't necessarily know what's up there, so it, it makes it that much harder for him to get the surround that he is looking for. And now Showtime's gonna want to. He's just gonna keep pushing forward. Blink is now done. Plus one is done. These force fields, yeah, they're not gonna be that great. But he did. But uh, that is exactly what Cyril is looking for here. He's trying to find. The position such that he can force force fields out. Looks like we had a uh, depths kind of get in there, but not really get a whole lot done. Um, force force fields out, force energy out of these out of these sentries. So then when he looks to take the engagement for real, his his banelings do not get force fielded out. So we have a big run by come here from Cyril into the main base once again. And this is uh, okay. The wall is there in time. Demour, the wall does stand. But it looks like Cyril he's just going to target the cyber core down. And uh, without a cyber core, you don't get sentries, you don't get stalkers, you don't get a bunch of different fun stuff. As the gate goes down as well, this is actually doing a surprising amount of damage here. I mean, it is just army and infrastructure damage. No worker, no workers are going down. But again, this is buying time for Cyril here. He's been, he has been on 72 workers for quite a while now. He has his four bases. Actually, this fourth base is kind of unassailable. 
and uh, he has been allowed to progress his tech. Infestation pit on the way. Plus two melee is just about done. He has been uh, he's been allowed afforded the position to get a bunch of zerglings on the left hand side that will either be a either be a surround or oh no that one zergling the the, the one trader Zer zergling shows showtime that well yeah, there's a zergling counterattack on the left hand side so those banelings morphing in it will be forced to get canceled here showtime though look what a read how many players would just see that zergling running by it's like okay it's a scouting zergling i yeah but no, he, he recognizes exactly what's happening here. So we do have a couple of depths shading it on the right-hand side. But, uh, those Zerglings will deal with that. But, of course, <laughs> this is showtime. This is Serral. There's never just one fight happening at any given time. Zerglings are going to try to get on top of this fourth phase and do some significant damage to it. However, there's just not enough there. And with the, with the Colossus and everything else, not going to happen. But what this has done, more than anything else, it has forced the army of showtime out of position. That is a lot. 62 Banelings on the map here. As Serral's going to look to crush on forward take care of this third base get on top of these uh, get on top of the probes 17 workers go down in an instant and Ch Cyril, he's gonna commit a decent amount of bailings so he admitted what uh 20 uh 20 odd bailings to killing that nexus i believe a bunch of bailings actually just eight clicked on the, the nexus down but now showtime he's on two bases and that doesn't feel very good however he's got a terrifying army he really does i mean it's two colossus it's pl it, uh, plus two is just about done uh, he has a bunch of Archons, and this is a really good position to attack into. These, uh, these Adepts will just get a couple workers, but they just, yeah, there we go. But that does mean the army of Serral is split for the moment. Now, Showtime, he has to do something here. He is maxed out, sitting here with 146 army supply. Yes, he has lost a lot of workers, but he replaced it with army. As now Serral, he's going to have to do something to try to push in here. These, uh, The first Disruptor shots, the Disruptor shots will not land. Bailings are going to try to crash, but you got to remember, Bailings do not nearly do as much as they once did against Stalkers, against anything that is not light. So Bailings are going to come crashing in. Disruptor models are going to go, or Ravager shots are going to go down. And yes, Showtime did, Serral did trade better than Showtime. If we look at pure supply differential. However, Serral doesn't have a lot of money. He is not, he's not sitting on a bank that he can allow him to trade like that. He does not have the time to rebuild his army. Showtime, he's knocking on his doorstep. And yes, Showtime, his economy's not great. Yes, he's barely on at three bases. But the actually, the Banelings are going to make great connections here. Kill off a bunch of those, a bunch of the Zerglings. Kill off a decent amount of the Disruptors. And the Biles are going to do more. But hey, it's the three Colossus. It's the two Colossus. Or the, yeah, the three Colossi that do stand strong. And the Blink Star, they're going to go forward. Drones have been pulled into three Colossi. And that is not a situation you ever want to be in here. As the Biles are going to go down, the Queens have been pulled. But Cyril, he is at his wits end. What more can he do to make sure he holds the six more Banelings on the way? But six more Banelings will not a hold make as the Disruptor Shots are going to go down. More, more and more Ravagers are going, going to die. And these Banelings will not even connect. Not really. Not with what they need to. As the two Colossi, they do, they do stand strong. And the Queens are going to go down. Yeah, sure time not even... Uh, not even paying attention to that queen. And now it's Daryl. He's going to get supply block. More importantly, he is going to die in showtime. He's going to take game number one. And now we need, need to wait for things. Uh... Need to wait for StarCraft to come back up so I can log back in once again, because uh, that's just how these things work. You go, you disconnect from Blizzard, you reconnect to Blizzard, you disconnect from Blizzard, you reconnect to Blizzard. You put your right foot in, take your right foot out, put your right mandible in, and shake it all about. You do the creepy spready, and you spread it all around. And that's what it's all about. Or something like that. And now we have game number two. We'll be on Romantic side. The Romantic side coming on in. It's going to be game number two. Third time, of course, took game number one in a position. To really not in the best position economically, but you realize that Cyril committed 20 Banelings to killing his third base. Those were 20 Banelings that were not available for the defense, and uh, Banelings were not nearly as cost-efficient as they once were. That being said, well, enough of that. Game number two is loaded in, and that is far more important. So let's go. And here we are, spawning in the bottom right. 
in the blue. Give it up for Sarah. And his opponents in the upper left in the red, representing Big Esports. It's showtime. So Showtime not going for the pro block in this game, making showing a little bit of a difference already, but uh, again, pro blocks, they don't make sense every game. Not exactly what you want to see every game, and you got to keep your opponent guessing. So now Cyril has been forced to send his uh, send his, his drone out uh, to make sure he can build his natural just about one drone too early. And uh, that, that's implicit damage, that's minor damage, especially when Showtime was uh, going for the more common gate scout. That means he's just able to get that much more uh, from his uh, from his early game and force Cyril to maybe just do a little bit less. Uh, again, these are minor things, but you got to remember, these are some of the best players in the world. So minor differences do have major impacts. So, game number one, we saw the Jun uh, build, um, or the Joun build. There we go. That, that's how that's how it's actually pronounced. Of course, this is all on the Alpha. This is going on the Alpha X YouTube page, so I want to make sure that I pronounce the Alpha X players appropriately. Let's uh, not do that. But Showtime, showing sure, something a little bit different here on Romance side. Game number one, of course. He went for the Adept Glaive into. Uh, Disruptor drops and uh, didn't get a lot done with the glaives, but he did get a decent amount with the disruptor drops and killing those 14 workers. You may say, haha, you know. <laughs> As a Protoss player, you may say, haha, no, no. Zergs don't care about drone losses, they just get, haha, drone, pr drone printer go burr. But no. Not how that works. Those 14 drones were 14 larvae that were not army, and it meant that the fourth, the third base was not saturated. Well, the fourth baseman that started as fast as it should, and it's a, it's a whole cascading effect. And what it meant at the end of the day was Cyril was lacking in army, was lacking in economy, was lacking what he really wanted to be able to make sure that he won that game with flying colors. If he was able to make that push on the third base a little bit earlier, maybe he can take, make the push and actually kill some army. Maybe his run buys do a little bit more. But when he is short, 700 uh, minerals worth of, actually more than 700 minerals worth of drones because you have to factor in, uh, you have to factor in the cost of replacing it and the drone itself and the lost mining time. But anyway, factor in all those things. Incredibly expensive 14 drone loss. Is 14 larvae that was that was spent on drones instead of zerglings, instead of roaches, instead of things that actually are useful to be effective on the map. It was later upgrades, maybe. Uh maybe maybe Cyril goes for Hydroling Bane otherwise and say, well actually you don't really want Hydroling Bane against that. Maybe he's able to get a high faster and has a couple of Vipers out to deal with that final push. And they, well, Vipers just kind of sh just shred that final push as the Colossi are pulled out of position. All these things, they may be minor, but they have a cascading impact in the game. Well, it's game number two. And we have the uh, Phoenix out, Oracle looking for things at the Zerglings. Once again, they're going to find this position. They're going to say, hey, what's up? What are you building in your wall? And he's going to say, oh, it's two Adepts. But it is not four. And Showtime, or and Cyril already knows that this is a Stargate opener. He saw the Phoenix. He knows he has to be afraid of uh, of Oracle. And actually, this is a well, this is a rather time or, time honored strat here in this game number two, as you have the the Phoenix, you have the two Oracles. The Phoenix strat dives and lifts the Queen. The two Oracles do a bunch of damage until the the Phoenix runs out of health, and then you run away. So now the depths are going to find these Zerglings here, just trying to kill a couple of them off, maybe, and they will get one. Now we have the, uh, we have it. Our, we have our, our Phoenix, our Oracles are going to dive on into the main base. Three, four, uh, only four workers are going to go down for the moment. Cyril does a really good job of targeting the Oracle down instead of the Phoenix. The Phoenix, I mean, who cares, does not kill drones by itself. However, the Oracles, the Oracles do. So the way you really put the kibosh on that is you do damage to the Oracles. And as I say this, this is a third Oracle being added here, so... 
when you look at the calculus of builds, you say, okay, one Oracle, yeah, it doesn't have to get anything done whatsoever. It's just there to keep you defensive. Keep safe. If you get a couple drones, that's really nice, but it's just for map control. Two Oracles, okay. Maybe I want to get some damage done. Two Oracles and a Phoenix. Yeah, I do want to get some damage done. Three Oracles and a Phoenix. I need to get some damage done. We're now at the point where... Well. Sir, uh, Showtime has to get something done now. He will live. And there's only one Queen and one Spore here. Which means three, four, five workers, more workers will go down. And it looks like the Phoenix will escape. But now the Oracles, they're going to shoot around the natural. But uh, two Queens are here in with the Spore. Yeah, these Oracles will not be able to get a whole lot done. As they sit barely on the edge of uh, Queen range. Now we have the War Prism coming on in with a two Adepts shepherded in by this Phoenix. It's, uh, well, Showtime now knows that there is no... Well, there's no vision here, so he's going to be able to drop a couple of Adepts off. And, yeah, just, he, oh, this is really fancy. So he's, he's going to go in, and he's, he's going to force a drone pull, but he, his Adept Chase is going to go off immediately, and he's just going to pick up and go home. That What great, just tiny bits of damage. I mean, i got to remember... Are the, is this incredible damage? Is this massive damage? No, it's not. Is this... Is this damage? Does, does this do something to Cyril here? Absolutely. It's forced, he forced the drone pull of the entire main mineral line. That is a third of Cyril's mineral, mineral economy. And uh, probably most of his gas. Not all... Not, not uh, most of the gas in the main. I mean, two drones were probably not pulled just because of they were hitting, hiding in the main base. Anyway. That was a third uh, of, of Cyril's mineral income not mining for about 10 seconds. Which is what, um... That's, that's, uh, 75 minerals, that's grown, and now one oracle will go down, so sir, we'll, we'll find that. And, uh, get rid of part of the, um, the bee in his bonnet. The thorn in his side, but now we do have a couple of depths they're gonna shade on in once again. There are four queens here, this shouldn't get a ton done, as now, now hydras will spawn as well, so Cyril, he's going into hydraling bane this game. And I, but I think, I think Cyril is better with hydraling bane than his road travager ling bane, I just, when I see him just do the, have these incredible games, it feels like... Hydroling Bane is the way he does it. But now, Cyril, of course, he's aware there's a fourth base on the way. Crater Zealot. And uh, nice force fields will be able to shape up a decent amount of these Zerglings. It's funny, again, you, you see Protoss players, they, they will commit century energy to be able to kill off ten Lings. And you, you might, ask, might ask yourself, is that worth it? Zerglings feel like they're practically free, but again, energy does, energy does regen. <laughs> Zerglings, they do as well, but they do not respawn. Unless you're playing, um... There, there, there was one particular co-op mod that... Or one one particular co-op setting. I think there may, may have even been a game mod where all units that die respawn as families. So. I know I've seen something about that. But in general, Zerglings do not respawn. Certainly, in pro professional level StarCraft 2, they do not respawn. Now we have Charge Let Run By is on the right-hand side as Cyril attempts to take his fifth base. Um, yeah, then Cyril's aware of this. These, these, these zealots are going to go down or not. Yes, <laughs> the zealots are actually in a really good spot, so it's going to be rather difficult to kill them off. But uh, Cyril says, look, I have all my army here. It's going to be fine. But th that's actually, this is really nice. This is really nice for Showtime. He's now knows where the army of Cyril is. And yeah, will he trade 200 minerals to know exactly where the army of Cyril is and get an idea about its composition? Yes, yes, he will. So yes, the, the zealots didn't get a whole lot done, but... Showtime is absolutely okay with that. Now we see Cyril, see Cyril here. He's posturing for for, uh, for a fight at about 172 supplies. So, I mean, he, this is kind of that timing, you see. As the, the, a couple of Banelings are going to attack onto these rocks. That is not what you want. And now we have the army of Showtime fighting over things. These storms are going to land on top of these Baneling eggs, and a bunch of Banelings will get canceled. So, how many Banelings do we have on the map? 34. That's a pretty good amount of Banelings. But uh, how many storms do we have? That's the bigger question. Looks like we have four more on that. One will go down. A forest field will be nice. A second storm will go down. So these first two storms, first one will land pretty well. Second one will whiff. As we do have this counterattack. Or run by coming in, but that's not going to get anything done. Cyril on top of things. He's got an army at home. He's got an army abroad. You're going to see storms once again coming on in. These storms are just not really going to land. But the stasis trap is going to get half these bailings. And with the shield battery overcharge, the bailings are just not going to get nearly what they want. As nothing can get on top of the High Templar. Nothing can get on top of the base. And Showtime, he is holding rather well. Now, these charge lots not doing all that great, but we have more storms now ready. And charge lots flanks coming in from every side. Now, yes, Showtime is going to be going to be hard for us to push back. This is too far because, I mean, there's a creep right here. But he's pushed back from his base for the moment. Now, we, now we do not have... But how many storms do we have? Is that... 
We have storms on the way in about 25 energy. So storms in 25 seconds, but that is not here. That is not now. And we just need to wait for that to happen. As it looks like Showtime's going to be able to push back. He does have plus two. Plus three on the way. He has his fourth base. He really would, he really would like to be able to remove this creep. He does not have an observer on the map. Of course, he's been spending all of his uh, up of his robo robo build time on uh, immortals, on things that I can actually fight back. But yeah, he has no observer, which is kind of problematic. As he <laughs> this creep highway that Cyril's got going for him here means that it is so easy for Cyril to just crush in again and again and again with hydrolink beam. But that being said, I mean, we look at the supplies here. Supplies are equal. Um, and that storm is going to be massive. Uh, Banley's going to go down, but man, look how look how weak those hydras are now. Cyril is progressing onwards. Lair Hive is just about done, as is Aspire. Empty Banley's going to run in and uh, get some decent trades against the against the Zealots. So maybe not the mineral line that Cyril would like, but not bad. Not. Kind of surprised we don't see Banley run by his moving into the third base, but I guess the wall is the 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 SimCity's two there is once again the Banleys are gonna come running on in. The storms are gonna be really nice, and the Hive Templar does survive regen energy once again to be able to build up more storms. We see another storm here, and these storms are just massive here from Showtime. He's making it so difficult for Sarah to push on into him. His army is just not allowed to have any sort of uh, any semblance of fully yellow. He will get two Archons, and that is really nice. Um, getting these Archons, of course. It's awesome, but they, now there's a run by here on on this 12 or this 12 or the six o'clock base Excuse me, and it is doing a decent amount of work now There are mainly Cyril has been forced to return, but now Showtime has some breathing room He has the opportunity to remove this uh, this overlord to be able to get himself a fifth base To be able to get into the sky toss style that he's looking for here Stargate's coming in. Okay, there we go So just told my recording software disconnected and uh, now it's reconnected So that got me worried as of course this is trying to go on YouTube, but we should be a okay now, so I was going to push in once again, but that is a lot of Archons. There's a shield battery overcharge, and there are six storms on the map. The six storms are more than enough to deal with this army of Cyril. As he looks to once again push in, but he does have to start... Well, he's, he's going up his tech tree, but I... Hmm. There are two carriers on the way, and Cyril is going into Broodlords. Um, Broodlords in, in ZVP have a very specific timing. You can hit absolutely. Generally, you hit them off of Roach Ravager, where you kind of start the hive at like seven minutes, and you have your you have your hive before ten, and then then you have uh, you're hitting that timing just before the the Burdos gets in the sky toss. But that is not what we have here. And there will be two carriers out by the time the well by the time the Greater Spire is done. So it's going to be rather difficult for Sale to get anything done, uh, especially with the lack of um, the lack of Burdos or something on the ground. But now we have Cyril. He's fighting with two armies at once. He says, "Look, if I can't if I can't bust you from the front, no, I'm gonna hit you from the left. I'm gonna hit you from the right. Maybe that's gonna be able to force you out of position. But no, Showtime is called Demauer for a reason. He is the Wall. He's the Great Wall of Europe, and it is so hard to just break him like this. And uh, that's why I, I worry for Cyril here in this game. He, he he's leaned so hard into this aggression for so long, and it really hasn't got has not got much from here. But he will be able to get on top of these carriers just like that. And oh." Yeah. He will get one. These storms, of course, will land on top of these eggs, and most of these zergling, uh, most of the bailing cocoons will not go off. Well, that storm will whiff. Now, I mean, it's carriers. Plus one air attack is just about done. Two more carriers are on the way, and rapidly we're hitting this point where there, the sky is just the sky toss is just really good. Now, of course, Showtime is here on the bottom side, uh, and he will be and not going to get a whole lot there. But again, he's forced Cyril back. He's forced Cyril to not just be leaning into him on this fourth base. He's allowed himself more time to get more carriers out, more storms out. And actually, he's maxed out, so he's going to have to look to start getting aggressive himself here. Maybe, at the very least, start trading things away as well. He's got a big army. He's got a scary army. How many carriers does he have? Three carriers, another, a fourth one on the way. And we have a run by on the right-hand side. That's not really going to get a whole lot done. Run by on the left-hand side, probably not getting anything either, but he is trading Zealots away, trading Zealots away for better units. And now we do have Broodlords on the way. Go, how many Broodlords is he, he's going to get? So, going up to like eight Broodlords. But there are no Vipers. And how in the world is Cyril supposed, supposed to deal with this air army of Showtime if there are no Vipers? He can't do it if he can't really get on top of anything. 
you know, get on top of these carriers and actually do what he's supposed to do, which is uh, kill them off. Now we have Showtime. He's going to come pushing in once again. Now, these are the, the Spore Forest is really nice. Uh, that's going to make it that much harder to go in. And Broodlords are just really good against things like Archons. But now the carriers have been sicked on, on top of these Broodlords. They're starting to get targeted down just like that. The Queens are trying to do what they can, but there are only so many Transfuses. And the Broodlords are starting to go down. Yes, the, there are Corruptors shooting away at these carriers, but that does not even matter. I mean, as long as the carriers knock out the Broodlords, that's all that matters. As there are Storm, there are Archons, there's everything else. And the army of Showtime is dominant. Serral, he's running out of steam here. As he's attacking in, in, in everywhere. But it's not going to be enough. And Showtime is going to take a two. It's going to take a two-zero lead over the greatest Zerg of the last three years. Arguably, still the greatest Zerg. Still the greatest Zerg playing currently. Uh, Rainer has a shot at that title. Rogue has a shot at that title. Title. I would. Hmm. I think I would put Rainer slightly higher at the moment, just because Rainer can beat Cyril right now, and Cyril cannot beat Rainer. And that's not a really a judgment of skill. Uh, I would like it to be, but it's not. It's really more of a judgment of uh, mentality. And Rainer, he had, or Cyril seems to have lost that clutch factor against Rainer in particular. So, there's where we are. And that is what we're doing. But hey, Cyril still has that clutch factor against everyone else. And we are getting into perhaps the best map for Zergs in the map pool. Gonna be Juggernaut, Juggernaut. Uh, there was a, of course, there was a thread on Ask Reddit just um, or on the the Star Card on on Reddit about what a month ago about how Juggernaut is actually pronounced Juggernaut. It's a, a name of an Indian hero. Um, but anyway, is that maybe game number three is on the way? Perhaps the best map for Zergs in the pool, and Cyril needs it to be because he's down two to zero. But hey, we're loaded in. We're ready to go. Let's do it. And here we are, spawning in the bottom left. In the red. Representing uh, Berlin International Gaming. It's showtime. And his opponent in the upper right is back against the wall, down 2-0. It's Sarah. And man, when was the last time you saw Cyril go down two to zero? Now, Cyril loses, has lost series. Absolutely, Cyril loses series. Uh, especially, I mean, against the top players in the world, you are bound to. However, Cyril does not go down to, I mean, Cyril doesn't lose three zero. But you always, always see him fighting back. I mean, it's rather rare. And it's not like this is this was the Serral of uh, the mid-year uh, mid where he was doing just a bunch of cheesy... Uh, like, late last year, early this year, where he was just doing a bunch of cheesy stuff, trying to expand his repertoire, make, make it so his opponents just can't, you know, cut every corner against him because they know he's going into a macro game. That he's still probably going to win, but he's trying to make it so they have to respect his early game just as much as they would anyone else. Which, of course, allows his macro game to be that much stronger. So that's what we see from that's what we saw from him a little. And he lost a lot of games because the man really didn't know how to cheese. I mean, he's a great player. But, well, A, cheese is more volatile. But B, I mean, that is not what has brought him a world championship. That is not what has made him the greatest player uh, on Earth. No, the best player on Earth. That is not what has led him to the top of a Ligulac for like two years running. I mean, the probe searching around, and uh, what are we going to see? What adaptations are we going to see in this game number three? Now, Cyril does have to win. He does have to find a way to win this game. And uh, in all honesty, there were a bunch of small things that happened in game one and game two. That if they go for Cyril instead of going for Showtime, Cyril probably wins that game. But Cyril, he was just not able to break Showtime. The, the state, he didn't see the stasis trap. So we lost half of his banelings on the uh, on the attack that probably were, was pretty close to breaking Showtime. And then, well, 
after that. He kept, he was trying to uh, lean into things, and it just didn't really work out well for him. But it's game number three. It's a new day. It's a new game. It is a new opportunity for Cyril to show us exactly what his what his mentality is like. Show, show us that level of fortitude, that clutch factor, that, that it factor. Cyril has been known to do, but that has been known for in so many games. And you know what I talked about? Yeah, Cyril doesn't go down on two. And uh, let me amend that statement. Actually, Cyril goes down to, to a decent amount, but the 0-2 is kind of what lights, up, lights the fire under him. Then he just goes and says, no, no, no. I don't win. I don't lose series. I may lose games. I don't lose series. And then he, he'll go reverse sweep. And the amount of reverse sweeps that Cyril has pulled off in his career is uh, not insignificant. Put it, put, it to that, put it to this way. The man knows how to win. And while Showtime... Showtime is not Rainer. Showtime is not this player that Cyril just kind of is a mental block against. It's Showtime... As I'm going to say his name like five times in the next sentence, in the previous sentences, apparently. But he is going to go for Twilight Tech in this game number... What? This game, this game number three, or... Yeah, it's game number three. I can do math. But with a lot of gates. So we have two gates... Uh, we have three more gates on the way. So he's going up to a grand total of five gates here. So I think what we're going to... We have the Void Ray out. Adept Glaive's on the way. So this is... Yeah, so okay. So this is the stats build. Where you go and you take like a four minutes and 30 second third base. But it's not really a third. I mean, it is. But behind that, you're dropping a bunch of... You're dropping a decent amount of gateways. You're getting glaives. And then you move across the map with a lot of a lot of glaive adepts. At just the point where the Zerg is really feeling safe and just hitting that drone key. Maybe uh, maybe he's starting to drone up their fourth. Maybe just finishing droning up their third, depending on how the game has gone. And you say, hey, I have 18 adepts. What are you going to do about it? And, well, especially if the, the, the Zerg has been satisfied that the Protoss is just going into a third base. Well, sometimes you'll see, like, Ling, uh, Hyd Hydra Ling against this, and Glaive Adepts do really, really well against Hydra Ling. Now we have the adept streaming across the map, and it looks like Cyril is aware of this. He he did get a Zergling, and he saw the amount of adepts that were made. It's like, okay, I know what's up here. And six six roaches are on the way. Two are already out, so we're going up to eight. I'm going to see more and more roaches uh, going out here. And this is a full wall, by the way. So this is something that we started to see Rainer do. I think, or when was it? But actually, no, the, it, it's up a little bit too late. Now the adepts are just going to target down the... Uh, they're going to just target down that full wall before it is able to get up. But more and more roaches, more and more lings are on the way here. So the adepts, they, they do find their way on into the main base. All the drones are going to be forced to be pulled here. But there are a bunch of drones. They're just going to sit on top of these adepts. Eight, more, eight drones do go down immediately. Again, the stats build is an incredibly powerful one. As we do see three probes on the way behind that. Three probes at a time on the way behind this. So, well, this is, uh, honestly, I think this is better than the, the, the standard glade build, to be totally honest. It, it catches so many zergs off guard. Because it's a Stargate build, the the Protoss got their third base, but they did not get their, they got their third base at four minutes and thirty seconds. They did not get their third base at three minutes and fifty eight seconds. And what that means is they have that much more wiggle room in their minerals and their gas that they're not spending on a four hundred fifty four hundred fifty mineral nexus. And instead, well, they're getting a t they're getting a Templar archives, and they're getting glaives, and they're getting a bunch of gates. But meanwhile, of course, they've been able to develop their third base beyond this. So this is simultaneously less committed. But honestly, I, I feel like it generally, at least in the current meta, has a higher potential for damage. As again, it catches the Zerg off guard. It's not what the Zerg is expecting. And when that happens, and I am sorry, there are a bunch of Zerglings running on into the natural here. Not really going to get a whole lot done in the main base, but we do have warp into the natural. And yeah, but they have a here. They're going to get two, maybe two, maybe three probes. But uh, while well, Zergling upgrades are not done. And I think Serral actually canceled melee upgrades because I think I feel like we saw them starting right as that attack pushed in I think he canceled that to make sure he got he had enough roaches had enough zerglings because he was truly panicking there but well the one probe is uh, of course blocking everything we have a little dance party of immortals of adepts here Cyril he's now got to find his way back into this game he took damage he took significant damage right Just resources lost here Honestly, actually just about the same, but 13, 13 workers going down is going to slow Serald down significantly. 
Now Cyril has to find his way back into the game. It looks like his approach is going to be a bunch of mutas, a bunch of mud mutts, or uh, mutas, as, as Cyril would call them. And uh, I mean, mutas are mutas are absolutely a valid strategy. Wait, did, did Showtime spot this? I return to Where is the spire? Yep, Showtime did see that, so that is why we do see uh, mineral, uh, shield batteries and and. Uh, shield batteries and cannons showing up in the mineral lines at Showtime here as he's just making sure that he does not die to the mutas but just because you have cannons does not mean that you're in a good position however the fact that we have a bunch of archons coming in we have phoenix on the way it means it's going to be difficult for Cyril to really get too much damage done here now he will find these uh he will find the phoenix out of position he will find this mineral line unprotected for the moment as the cannons are not done yet he's going to be able to jump on top of these uh the phoenix as well but of course there's a shield battery overcharge so it's not really going to be able to get a whole lot yet and actually we do know that we do see the army of showtime is going to try to box these in but instead cyril he finds the phoenix and he's just doing a really good job of dancing where uh, being where his opponent is not is uh in the words of sun tzu where your opponent is strong attack or where your opponent is uh, is don't effectively don't engage where your opponent is strong attack where your opponent is weak so where your opponent is strong evade where your opponent is weak attack and there's a third part of that. But effectively, when your opponent's attacking, defend. When your opponent's defending, expand. When your opponent's uh, expanding, attack. Is, is that nice holy trinity of StarCraft tactics that was uh, coined by someone. But of course, it's very much based off of Sun Tzu there. Now, he just will find these Phoenix and not be able to get on top of them too much. It's a random pylon, a random gateway, but uh, I guess it makes good scouting here. And Cyril is committing rather hard to this. But as I say that, so he's here on 14 meters. He's got plus one uh, air attack on the way. But he's going into Hydrolink Bane behind this. And this is actually a pretty cool idea. So we do know, of course, there are High Templar on the map. And there is room for that. But there is no storm. As we, we look here. Um, now the meters are going to be trapped in a corner. And they do need to find a way out. And they will be able to do so. As we see the main army engaging as well. But anyway, the Banelings, there is no Banelings speed yet. So these Banelings are not going to do a whole lot of they're going to do a whole lot of nothing it is going to be a nothing burger here's the the archons and the this one archon is going to move forward the meters they find the fourth base and they will be able to kill it off they will actually that's not even a cancel that's a kill a great move there from sarah but anyway there are high templars on the map but they're all being transformed into archons that means there will be no storm to deal with the massive amounts of uh of hydroling bane that suffers so so drastically from storm so now the mutas they're going to look to go on into the main base meanwhile cyril's going to have this incredibly powerful hydroling bane army nearly maxed out crashing into this army of a lot of well i mean a decent amount of archons but a, some of them have died just like this hodgepodge of things um really a lot of a lot of immortals though and uh, hydroling bane deals with immortals pretty well meanwhile we do have of course have these mutas in the natural and i showtime i feel like he probably has enough phoenix at this point to deal with it but that just means the mutas are going to join the attack Cyril here, he's maxed out, just waiting for the rest of his Banelings to morph. He has plus two attack. He has Hydra Speed just about done. There it is. And now, it's the time to sweep in from every side. These mutas will be able to just find whatever they can. Uh, Cyril, he's collapsing, but uh, Showtime, he's cogniz cognizant of this. Let's see, of course, retreats to the high ground. Retreats to the speed zone. But now, it looks like, okay, no, Cyril's not going to take that fight. He's looking for it. He's not going to be able to take it. And uh, again, as, this, as these fights happen longer, uh, as these t fights take uh, take more and more time, that's just more Banelings on the map. That is just more um, more opportunities for Cyril to just really take advantage of his economic lead. As another meters, once again, they do find the mineral line, but the, the Phoenix will find them. But uh, I think this is, a, looks like, look, yeah, it looks like Cyril, he's just going to trade his meters out here. Doesn't really care anymore. He says, look, I have done enough. I have forced the tech out of you. Um, I have killed so so much of your economy. It actually looks like Cyril, he's going to section this army off. So many Banelings are going to come run on into these slow zealots. The charge is not done yet. Cyril is able to take everything. Meanwhile, he has a run by also in this fourth base. So Cyril is just everywhere at once. He will be able to knock out the fourth base once again. And now Showtime is in an all-in position. Much like game one, but this time there are no Colossus. There is not ludicrous splash like we, what we saw in game number one. There are just four Archons. And, uh, well, maybe, yeah, five Archons. 
Uh, but now Sarah, he's going for a full surround here, 360 degrees, as he's going to be able to segment the army off from itself. Now Bailey's going to come crashing in on top of everything here. And the Phoenix, they're just nothing. I mean, there are enough, there are enough Hydras here to be able to do with everything. Bailey's from behind as well. Bailey's don't even want to crash into these, into anything, to be totally honest. I mean, these, they're, they're immortals. They don't want to, they don't want to deal with anything. And now we're just going to have just a couple of zealots left, and that's it. GG. Cyril, finally, I'm back in the series. So now Cyril, he has a game. But he has found his way into the series. He's found his foothold, potentially. And maybe that's all he needs. Maybe that is his route to a... Uh, maybe that is his route to a victory in this series. He's, he got his game. He's got, he's got his feet under him now. And, uh, well, after that, who knows? Who knows what the future may entail? I do know. I can't tell you this. Game number four will be on Pillars of Gold. It's not another big map. Another map with a... Inc well, I'm not going to say another map. But a map with an, an incredibly exposed third base. So maybe that's something Sarah's going to look to abuse here. I don't really know. Uh, again, I have not seen... I have not seen any of these games. Uh, I think I saw... I think I saw game one. When it, when it was played live, but I've not seen the rest of them. I was actually, I think this happened when I was uh, casting the Corporate Esports Association uh, collegiate, well, one of the uh, Corporate Esports Association events with Steadfast. So yeah, don't worry. I'm, I am learning about this series as I am casting it here with you. But as I say that, I'm ready to learn a little bit more. Pillars of Gold, map number four. It's all ready. It's all waiting. Let's go. And here we are spawning in the upper right in the blue. Down one game to down one game to two. It's zero. And his opponent in the bottom left in the red, looking to lock this series up, move on to the playoffs of the Ace RG Online 2020. It's showtime. So, game number one, Cyril, he lost, he, he lost too many workers, and then he was not really able to get himself in a position he wanted. His creep wasn't where it needed to be, and he lost to about 140 supply of Protoss, um, barreling down his throat after Protoss lost their economy. Game number two, game number two, Cyril almost broke Showtime's fourth, but instead, the... Uh, <laughs> The one stasis trap, the traitor stasis trap, knocking, locking out, down about 12 banelings from that push that would have crashed into Showtime's army from the side and won the fight. Didn't happen. And then Sarah was just trying to break a position that was getting progressively more difficult to break because, well, I mean, this is Demauer, right? He is the shield. He is the shield of Europe. He is the wall of Europe. He he is. He does not lose against aggressive stuff. Not really. Not all that often. But anyway. Game number three, of course, Cyril is fighting back, taking a great fight, going into Mutas there, forcing his opponent into a composition that didn't really want, and then that he wasn't really a big fan of, and then Hydra Link Bane without Storm. Well, that is incredibly difficult for the Protoss to fight, at least for us to fight a Hydra Link Bane composition as expertly piloted as Cyril's is. So now we're sitting here, game number four. You have all been caught up. We're sitting here on Pillars of Gold. Of course, it is a bigger map. It has a longer rush distance. It is a three building wall in the natural. It's not really going to come into fact, going to factor into things too much this game. Now we do see Cyril taking this third base, just about 30 supply. But sometimes, of course, you do see uh, on these three building wall uh, naturals, you do see the Zergs say, hey, look, it takes three buildings to wall. That is an expensive, that is expensive. That is more, that is more surface area. Let me shovel Zerglings down your throat. I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what we're going to see this game. Uh, that does not strike me as a Sarah move. That's more like an Armani move or a Rainer move or a Bly move even. But, uh, well, we shall see. As, uh, once again, Showtime is going for the Stargate build. He wants to be able to take his third base at a normal time. 
and just have a little bit of fun with it. Now, this is, of course, not... Well, we'll bet that. We're going to have to see. As I was going to say, this is not the build he did last game. Who knows? I mean, that is an incredibly powerful build. Yes, Showtime lost at the end of the day, but he did not lose because of the build, uh, because of the opener he chose. He was able to get his three bases rather effectively. He got a lot of worker damage. And Cyril just found his way back through Muta play. Is, uh, I think there are two things I hear Zer Protoss complain about. They complain about the fact that Zerg can just re re uh, replace workers just like that. You know, haha, drone printer, go burr. And then the other thing. It, well, I guess three things. The other one is the 12, the macro 12 pool. And the third one is Mutas. But now Showtime is going for, it looks like he's going for a variant of what he did last game. As he does, we do have three more gates on the way here. And they're all being proxies. We have a Twilight Council on the way as well. So is Showtime even going to pretend to get a third base? Um, we're going to have to see a probe going out there rather soon if he's going to hit that like 430 timing. But I mean, there are three gateways here. There are, well, three, four gateways finishing up on top of two. So it's going to be six gates. We should see Glaives get started now. So this is a Glaive timing that's going to hit about five. 515 is when Glaives are going to finish. Of course, give or take Corona. And it looks like Showtime... Yeah, it looks like I okay, so this is just gonna be a Glaive Adept all in. I mean, the uh the, the, the stats build is a little bit different. I mean, this is a variant of that if we want to talk about that, but stats build at least pretends to get a third base. That Showtime did that and I think Showtime has maybe decided that the reason he lost last game, he got a lot of damage, but he also lost 16 adepts. It's like, okay, it's just because I, I committed too hard to a third base. I spent 450 minerals on a third base that could have been an extra gate may uh, an extra gate maybe. That could have been more work. That could have been more in depth. So now he's saying, okay, well, you know what? I have learned from my mistakes. It is now time for me to do ze do the zealot printer build. But this is a zealot all in. This is zealot all in. You see the robo not even done yet. So the first zealots are going to shade on in, and then we're going to then we are going to see the war prism coming on in behind. And is Cyril aware of this? Or, yeah, he absolutely is aware of this. Ten roaches are on the way. And uh, the trick though is there are not a lot of zerglings yet. And this is not a full wall, so the queen... That, okay, there we go. Now we have the wall, but the queen, three queens are marooned. And that means these queens may die. It actually looks like the they're just going to target this wall down. But Cyril, he's going to get the cancel off. And actually, this is looking really good for Cyril thus far. No queen has died. The roaches, roaches are out in plentiful numbers. And, well, we just don't see um, enough adepts here. He has the adepts shade off to the other side. They're not even shaving to the high ground because of the wall. So, of course, Showtime, what he did, he targeted up here. He targeted up into the natural. Okay, it looks like this queen will die. Anyway, Showtime targeted into the natural, but with the wall there, of course, the adepts, they just go to the nearest possible point, which is not up the high ground at all. As we see the, the wall going in once again, the innovations we see from Protoss players are being used against them now. As Zerg players, they also have a door. Finally. Showtime, he says, look, okay. Five gates are not enough. We're going up to eight. We are turning this thing up to 11 here. So now it's going to be eight gate Adept Immortal. And now the Adept, well, once again, they will find a wall. And Cyril is just really handling this well. Looks like the Zerglings, they, okay, the Zerglings will find this uh, this situation. Okay, now this is bigger. So not only Cyril know where the buildings are. So maybe he can sneak on in later. He knows that there are sentries. He knows that there are Immortals. So he knows what the follow-up of this is. A nice force because they won't be able to kill off all these Zerglings. And, when you, well, when you're dealing with the depths, I mean, the, the Zerglings, their lives are kind of forfeit anyways, but you would like them to maybe shark around, maybe get on top of this thing later, force Showtime back. But if we look at Cyril, he's up 14 army supply. He has Ravagers now. So he has what he needs to be able to deal with this force field push, as uh, he will be able to just target down these adepts immediately. That is a lot. It is a lot of roaches, and queens have been pulled down as well. The, the injects have been stacked, and now the queens are going to do what they can to try to make this fight happen. When this fight is, we do see uh, more and more biles coming down, but... Well, those piles are actually going to be really good. Kill off, doing a lot of damage to a lot of these adepts. But there are three immortals here. And three immortals that do a powerful fire base make. But no, Serral says, no, no, no. Trixie builds from D Mauer. No, no, no. I like you when you, well, or you're much better when you do a uh, defensive play, when, when you're just a little bit more s steady and standard. You should do that next time, because uh, when you try to do this, I'm going to slap you aside. So, of course, he had the perfect scouting. He had the perfect response. And now one Immortal has already died. We're going to see that probably the other two go down in a second. But the Biles will land on top of everything. Now, second Immortal goes down, and with only Immortal left, that is not a powerful fire base indeed. Against Queens, against Roaches, against Lings, there are not enough Adepts. And GG with the War Prism going down. We're going to Game 5.
So game number five. On the way, we have the ace match coming up up here in this Group D winner's match. Winner, of course, moves on to the playoffs of Aces ROG Online Summer 2020. Loser, while well, they still got another shot in the, uh, in the final match of the day. And man, I gotta say, the fact that ROG decided to do, to do this many best of fives is awesome. It is so great. Well, we get to see these long extended series. And I mean, look, if, the, if this was a best of three, as is standard for kind of GSL format, Cyril, we wouldn't see any more of them. We would not see those last two masterful games. And we would not get the opportunity to see this game five. It would have just been a 2-0 for Showtime. And granted, Showtime played excellently in those first two games, but... The drama, the story of a best of five is so much, I don't know, more interesting, uh, more in-depth, more engrossing, more, uh, more all-in-capturing than a best of three. And I get it. You know, you don't want, to, you don't want your players to play insane. You don't, you don't want broadcast to go too long. But, man, when you have the opportunity to do something like this, it is awesome. The fans love it. Maybe the players don't love it as much. I don't know. But, hey, game number five, Oxide. Ooh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a spicy one. Let's go. And here we are. It is the last map of this best of five. Players are tied two to two. And in the upper right, in the red, it, he is the one, the only, the mouth. Of course, you at home may just know him as Showtime. And in the bottom left, in the blue, representing Ents Esports. Give it up for Sarah. And that is an interesting pool position. I, w I don't know. I have, I actually really have no idea why you would put, put your pool here. Um, there are so. Okay, I, never mind. This is for later on. I was gonna say for early up, for, for early game. I mean, you don't want to do that for a spot for cannons because that just means if there's a cannon rush there, on the off chance, it means you lose your cannons. Actually, this is rather interesting. Overlord. Okay, so never mind. That makes sense. This overlord placements for uh to deal with any sort of uh proxy stargate or something i like proxy border is i guess that that is what that's for um but this probe's gonna go in and this is showtime he does not do cheeky cheesy things and here we are game number five showtime doing the same thing he's done the last four games Cyril, the same thing as well when we talk about the build order variants well PBZ ZBB in the first three minutes. Eh, there's not a whole lot. Unless there's a cannon rush, I guess. And now, well, we have a couple Zerglings. They're going to search across the map looking to see whether they can, well... Find what they can see. Now, these two Zerglings, I highly doubt they're going to be able to get on into this, uh, into the natural player. Although, it looks like they're going to get in. They're going to arrive just before this, the Adept comes out. But now, there's a shield battery. There's a pro. It's not really going to happen. And they, it looks like the Adept's going to try to chase these Zerglings down. But they're going to split off, so the Adept's not really going to find either of them. Oh, okay, actually, yeah, that's what that was. So, with the, the Zerglings splitting off like that, it kind of made it look like maybe Cyril had more Zerglings behind that. So, Showtime backed up. He said, no, this is not worth it. This is not worth dealing with. No. I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna shade across the map and do my scouting, do all that. But the queen's out of position now. And there are only two Zerglings here to, to defend against the shade. But now, okay, there we now we have a couple more. There we go. Cyril's got what he needs. And we're gonna go on. We're gonna progress. Third base on the way. And a Stargate in this ultimate game in this series. Showtime likes how the Stargate builds have gone thus far. Maybe just find a little bit of variance to it. Maybe he just doesn't want to have to take an aggressive option in this series, in this game. Whatever the case, Stargate will be the tech path of choice here. Give me a, vo be a Void Ray as a start as well. Again, this has become incredibly popular in, well, in every matchup, but particularly in ZVP. Ever since they buffed the Void Ray, they made it cost less gas. And uh, they upped its movement speed, so you can justify getting a Void Ray where you maybe could not have justified it previously.
course, the spider break will come out, and this is a scout in and of itself, even if the Overlord does go down. Well, now Cyril knows that it's a Void Ray opener. He knows that there's a Stargate. He knows to be afraid of things like Phoenix and, and Oracles. Uh, probably not a Phoenix. I mean, you don't get an Oracle in, or you don't get a Phoenix in a Void Ray, but maybe, or maybe, uh, be afraid of an Oracle, maybe. Get your, get your Spores, and he already has them in, in location in the main. And of course, we do see the Spores in the natural in the third on the way as well. So now we have a couple Zerglings. They're going to scatter around, trying to see if they can find this third base. And they will be able to. They, this is, not, of course, not enough to cancel the third base, but will be enough to scout that there is a third base here. So that is what we see. Is that, yeah, again, look at Cyril's scout. I mean, he's just got little Zerglings running all the way across the map. Overlord speed as well. He just wants to make sure he doesn't die to anything crazy in this game number three. I mean, he almost died on Juggernaut. The losing that many workers to uh, the adepts really was a hindrance to him, but he was luckily he was able to kill off most of the adepts. Now the adepts are going to come on get here into this third base and uh, kill. I think they got they got one drum, but now we have the oracle running on into the main base here. That is was not controlled properly though, so it will be forced back. But now of course adepts into the natural third circling here. So yeah, the adepts will not do anything. Showtime looking for any any little bits of damage that he can find. Unfortunately, it will not, unfortunately for him, it will not be successful. But hey, he is getting ready. This is, of course, just little bits of damage focused on keeping Cyril honest. Forcing, yeah, Zerglings forcing uh, no roaches. I don't think he, he's not felt the need to get any worse. I don't even think he has the roach war in this game. But just forcing Zerglings, forcing Queens, doing all that. doing Just keeping his opponent honest. Because now there is going to be a decent stasis trap for, for, uh, Four drones will be well I guess three drones were captured from this one there was another one that was captured previously just minor things um, you of course you want everything working but it's um, well it's only four it's only four drones and uh, not mining for about 40 seconds that's less impactful than killing four drones but again you do you work with what you can So we have charge on the way, four more gates, uh, Templar, Ar uh, Templar Archives as well, so Showtime looks like his mid-game tech, uh, tech path of choice is going to be Charge Light Immortal Archon, and that's a pretty powerful choice, and actually looks like Cyril here. Cyril is just, well, he's going to mix it up a little, and we're going to see this, uh, the style that players like Cham, I think, is the one I see, I've played a whole lot, um, I think we've seen Rainer do it a couple times maybe, but this swarm host roach ravager style where you you get a little bit more a uh, little more drones than a normal swarm host style would be but it, it is a battling swarm host uh, roach ravager style where you get up like 18 swarm host and everything else is roach ravager and you go and you look to see a fight but I actually hold that thought here is now the queens will be found force fields are going to be rather nice but the this void ray is going to get targeted down and the queens will survive so this this weird this weird little move out well it will get slapped aside now. Of course, Sarah, his goal is to be able to knock, knock down this immortal, and he will be able to do so. So the immortal will go down, and Sarah will absolutely trade some trade some roaches for that. Especially as we have 13 storm hosts on the way. And the, the big deal, of course, is Showtime was not able to get across the map, was not able to start doing damage to the homeland of Sarah before the swarm hosts are out. And what that means is now Cyril is going to have he's going to have this opportunity to move across the map with a bunch of swarm hosts, plus one roaches, ravagers, and rap. I mean his his supply is going to rapidly expand. But you got to remember, this is Showtime. This is Demauer. The amount of times that I've seen Showtime hold this specific strat, and when it just looks impossible, and Showtime's supply just keeps growing, and eventually he he holds like he holds it, he wins the game, is significant. Now that's not oh this these sports fields are really nice as we know see Show Showtime. He's going to be practicing here, so A, he has forced Locusts far out of where they would like to be, so this, well, they're just not going to have nearly as much time as they would like. Um, well, he killed a couple Swarm Hosts, and the Swarm Hosts are not supposed to die here, especially with the Shield Battery Overcharge. The Archons will not die. So, Swarm Hosts, they're not supposed to die. They really are not. They are there to gain value up until the point where they're just not really all that useful anymore, then maybe you trade them out for something a little bit more impactful, but... Swarm Host, they're not supposed to die, and once again, it looks like Showtime is going to jump on top of this before the Locusts are ready, so he's forcing them out piecemeal, and he's fighting this, he's fighting the army, well, he's really only fighting 50% of the army here, this is actually, this is actually incredible, so generally you see kind of, a, I've seen Showtime win this, or win, win games like this by, um, well, by just defending really well, but this is, uh, this is 
putting a new new meaning to offense is the best defense. As the locusts, they're just not allowed to fight. Uh, it looks like Showtime may lose this fourth base as the roaches are here, but actually the oracle's doing a good job of defending it. And now, yeah, so these locusts, they're going to land, and they're just going to immediately pop. So all the roaches are going to find this fourth base. It looks like this fourth base will actually go down. Unless Showtime can rotate around to the... Yeah, okay, they're just going to get canceled. Right call there from Showtime. He is trading so cost efficiently that he can afford to uh, not lose anything, or to, to not have that fourth base for the moment. Now we have, the, we have all these swarm hosts going up to the main base. They're going to release the locusts. Maybe try to get some tech damage done. It looks like the rest of the locusts will not launch. So only four. Oh, never mind. They will. We see a bunch of locusts uh, running on into the natural. I just started going to be targeting down a whole lot of a whole lot of probes, but not even really getting all that much. Because we have the Protoss army here. It's going to find a bunch of roaches here on the left-hand side. The locusts, they're trying to engage, but they're just too slow. Because look, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll find the Protoss army. They will land and then just immediately run out of health. But of course, the real fight is on the left-hand side here. Showtime at about 150 supply. And once again, I think we were talking about this earlier. When you look at styles like this, it's much like dealing with the Terran mech player. If you can keep the mech, the mech player, if you can keep the Protoss below 150 supply, it feels good. It feels like you're getting something done, but if you can't do that, you cannot keep the mech player below 150 supply, well, suddenly things get a little bit scary because the mech army, the Protoss army, is going to be so much more cost efficient than your Roaches, than your Ravagers, than your Swarm host. But now, we, of course, we do have Sarah. He's going to run on in once again, and these battles are going to be really nice. He's going to knock off a decent amount of these Zealots, and he's going to get a lot of probes. So he has successfully managed to segment off the army of Showtime from, well, Showtime off from the, the, the glut of his infrastructure here. Now, the Swarmers do launch once again, but they, they get nothing done. There are too many Archons here. And now, well, the Archon and the Warp Prisms is dropping and landing and dropping and landing. And now Showtime, he has found the army. The Force Field is going to be really nice. And who is surrounding whom here? At the, the Immortals, the Force Field is going to drop on top of everything. And so many Roaches, so many Ravagers are just going to go down, are going to reign supreme. And Showtime... His supply is rapidly, rapidly approaching that of the of, of the Zerg player. And actually, he's going to find all these Stormposts as well. He will not be able to kill any of them, but this, yeah, this Nidus will not go up. As you see, Nidus in the front. That Showtime will also find, conveniently enough, with his uh, with his Zealot run by his, these couple of Adepts here, or a couple of Archons getting on top of all, the, all of these Raptors. Serral, he's just falling apart. His army, he's just not able to get it where it needs to be. And more importantly, Showtime is able to get his army exactly where it needs to be here. As Roaches, as Raptors, they're going to go down. The Biles are going to land pretty decently. Another or another Archon does go down. Maybe Showtime's been a little bit too aggressive. He's lost most of his Archons. Only his three. He's two more on the way. And the supply is not exactly where it needs to be. But, I mean, there are a lot of Immortals. Somehow the Immortals have never died. As Force Fields are going to land pretty nicely once again. We do have the Swarmos launching things on the right-hand side. More and more, we're going to see a bunch of locusts on in here, and this is where things get a little bit scary. Showtime has done such a good job making sure he takes no damage whatsoever. But now, now we have the locusts on into the main base, and now the, the charge slots will get on top of this night. So nothing on into the main base here, but it looks like the adept locusts are going to land. Meanwhile, of course, Showtime, he says, yeah, I don't really care about the main base anymore. It's mined out. It's okay. But you probably care about your base. You probably care about your base indeed. And, uh... Yeah, Serral does. This is a lot more important to Serral than, than Showtime is losing his main Nexus. Now, he doesn't want to lose any tech, and I don't believe he did. But now Showtime is moving on in here. Yes, he does have a lower army supply. That is true. But his army is so powerful. Sitting here on seven Immortals, four are eight, eight Immortals, four Archons, a Void Ray. And this army is terrifying. I say, yeah, so yes. Um, Showtime was able... Uh, or Sarah, Sarah was able to knock down Showtime's main, but he did lose two bases in the exchange. Now uh, Showtime's going to lose his fourth base, but this is the fight in the middle of the map. This is what matters here. Sarah, he has to hold this as Showtime. He's marauding forward. Sarah holds. He probably wins the game, but if he, he is not able to hold this, well, this is Showtime's ticket to the to the playoffs here. And I don't I don't know if Sarah can. It is this is a plus three Protoss army, and he's going to get the Nidus. There is no way for these for the Swarm host to be able to get back. They're stuck in this Nidus right here. So. Yes, it is uh, 107. It is 96 army supply, but realistically, it's about 70 army supply for Serral. 93 for Showtime here. He has no way to get his. He has no way to get a swarm host back. And yes, the swarm hosts are not nearly as effective as they once were. Well, okay, actually, I guess there's a there's a nice rare that he can get pretty close. Um, but I guess yes, the the swarm hosts there are not nearly as impactful as they once were in the in the straight up fight. But they are still powerful units. And now Serral, he's stuck on two bases. We have the swarm hosts. They're gonna they're gonna launch. And take out this base of Showtime as well as this is this map, this claim fives everything. It is cracked up to be 
game five, match point, and Showtime Cyril, they are giving it all they got. Just a bunch of just a bunch of charge loss here. As there's just not a lot of gas for either player. Showtime Cyril, they don't really have what they want, but they had. <laughs> so all they can have they they can use is what they have as charge lots. Immortals are gonna get on top of things, the Biles are gonna rain down once again, and Cyril, he's on two bases. Granted, Showtime is also on two bases, but his his two bases are a lot healthier than Cyril's are. He's actually well. Actually, never mind. So Showtime's on one base. What am I saying here? He has functionally no economy. And now Cyril, he just has to hold this, but I'm not sure he can, as he has been segmented off in the, in, into his main base. He has been put into a corner. Charge bluffs are getting on top of everything. His drones are dying here, and as are the Ravagers. Ravagers have nowhere, no room to kite, no room to fall back to, as these plus three charge bluffs, all of these immortals, firing down Cyril as one Nexus left, and he is on the ropes here. The, these locusts, they're going to do what they can, but that is not enough. And GT, Showtime, he's going to take it.